All right. So the next session, the, the, we already finished the first part is the uh, general guide for the e invoice. Now the second part is come to the e invoice specific guideline. E invoice specific guideline is mentioned in what transaction, what e invoice I need to issue, whether e invoice as a required supporting for me or not. So there's a few specific guidelines I will, I, will, I will explain to you, share with you. The first one, consolidated invoice. What is being consolidated is you consolidated all the normal invoice and submit to the income test. So let's say you have this you under P to C business. Customer, some customer require invoice, some customer does not require invoice. So e invoice, if require invoice, of course you will give them the invoice. Huh? If not required, then you issue normal invoice. So when after end of month, so you need to find out how much the normal invoice they have issued up and then consolidated all the normal invoice become the consolidated invoice and submit to IRB within seven days after the end of month. Okay, this seven days is including week day, week, week end. Uh. Let's say first, the second is a Saturday and Sunday, it's also including uh. so. This doesn't guide. There's no say the, the guide didn't say the seven day is not including the weekend. Uh. So seven days is including weekend public holiday. So you need to manage yourself. What is the due date to submit this consolidated invoice? So when when you submit your when your time want to consolidate the invoice, measure those already issued invoice don't include in the consolidated invoice. Uh. Because here customer already require invoice. Here doesn't so you need to separate up only the normal invoice issue consolidated other already issue invoice and just leave it then after this both combined together will be total sales of the month okay so in the consolidated invoice this is uh, your buyer details buyer details is mean your customer details customer detail of course because normal e invoice you do not you do not have your customer detail so customer name there, you put general agree. Customer team number, you put EI0010. All right. And then other detail, you just put NA because you do not have a detail for the buy uh, customer. Okay. So from supplier, it means your company details. This one, I think you you know lah, because your company, you need to put everything, lah, your company information here. Issue the issue, the consolidated invoice. So how to submit, how to uh, submit the consolidated invoice to the income tax? Uh, there's a three format for you to select. Uh. The first one is in the invoice, consolidated invoice, you can summary each receipt under one item. Or you combine all the invoice under one single line item. Or you submit invoice by branch. Let's, uh, let's say, example, you have many branches like KL branch, Teras branch or PJ branch. So you can commit as uh, combine together, submit one consolidated invoice, or you separately submit it consolidated invoice by branches. So what is the format? I let's say I I this is the format one. You submit by sync separate line. Separate line means that you need to list out what is the here, here's a description will be the invoice number. Normal invoice number. Let's say you have 50 invoice in the month. So we will have a 50 line. 50 line. So you need to list out every invoice number here. Uh, and then what is the quantity? Quantity normally is one now uh, because you just put one quantity and what is the total amount of that invoice? So let's say you have 20, 20 line, 30, 30 line, 100, 100 line. So this is one uh method, separate line. All right. The next Method is a combined single line. Single line is here, here in the description. You mention all the invoice number, all right? All the invoice number you need to mention up in here, and then quantity is one. You total up all the invoice become one. I um, and then just just one single line. Let's say you say uh, the invoice is running from zero zero one until zero 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 one hundred. So you can just uh mention zero 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 one. To zero one hundred, no need to separate out. Uh, no need to mention all the invoice number, lah, Of course, uh, if let's say your invoice number not like that, uh, let's say, let's say this example. This example is the outlet, lah. 
let's say when you submit your invite, it consolidated to uh, for outlet. This 110 to 112 is one item. You can submit under one. But one, you see 103 is missing because that customer require invoice. That's why it's missing here. So that's why you cannot combine. You, you, you must use like that. This 114 invoice uh, under here. And 115 customer request invoice. So they will be not in here. So this is what the how the method you submit your consolidated invoice. Okay. All right. So now here is mentioned what are the industry? They are not allowed to issue consolidated invoice. This means when, when if you are doing this business, when your customer come to buy from you, even though you are individual, they still you still require to get information from them and issue invoice to them. All right. Example, the first one, the first one is the automobile your sale of motor vehicle. Let's say your customer is an individual, they want to buy a car, buy a motorcycle, buy a car. Even though you know that they are individual, they're not running business, you're still required to issue invoice to them. Huh? All right. You cannot say uh, normal issue, normal invoice, later on consolidated and uh, submit one month. You cannot do that. Okay. The next one will be sale of air ticket. Like next time when you want to buy air ticket from the mask from the Asia, so you also need to require to key in all the information, your name, IC number, T number, email address, in order for them to issue invoice to you. Okay, because they cannot issue normal invoice to you. The third one will be luxury good and jewelry. This industry, so this industry currently they mentioned is there's not a lot to issue consolidated, but the details still need to wait the government to announce what type of good consider is luxury good. Is there any category, any amount to justify this consider luxury good? So we still don't know. So this category, we still need to wait further update from the income tax. The fourth is the construction company. Construction company, when you do a construction business, you're not, you, you cannot issue normal invoice to your customer. You must issue e invoice. Huh? You cannot issue normal invoice. Huh? Construction company contractor, including the renovator, huh? you, when you do a renovation, they also not allowed to issue uh, normal invoice. They might issue e invoice. The fifth one, wholesaler and retailer of construction material. Okay, this one have an issue. Huh? Because the guide, until today, the guide mentioned wholesaler and retailer of the construction material. They no matter what type of construction material they sell to a customer, whether it's small item, big item, as long as it's construction material, when your customer comes to buy from you, you are required to issue e invoice to them. They not issue normal invoice. But but I hear there's some guy, I hear some news that income desk might going to update this guy uh, to have some criteria. What are the items can be? Excluded. So we still need to wait for the further guide from the income tax. But until today, the guide version in the portal is mentioned all the wholesaler and retailer is not required, is not allowed to issue consolidated, must be invoiced. Okay. The last one, uh, next one, the license, pitting, and gambling. This one, previously they mentioned if let's say you win the money, let's say from the casino, from the printing. When they want to pay the price to you, they need to issue invoice to you. But later on, income tax say that this one on hold first, exempted until further notice. Okay. The last one is payment to agent, dealer, and distributor. If let's say you have payment commission an incentive to the agent, dealer, and distributor, you cannot issue normal invoice. Huh? You can you must have an e invoice to support. Okay. So how to issue the invoice for this category, I will mention later on. So here is the seven type, uh, here is seven type of uh, businesses. They are not allowed to issue invoice. The sixth one on hold, the third one need to wait, and the fifth one also need to wait for further guide. All right. So the next one will be on sell bill invoice. What is this sell bill? Sell bill is mean that you issue invoice to yourself. Why I need to issue invoice to myself? Okay, you need to understand. Uh, but some 
some transaction, the, your customer, your supplier is unable to issue invoice to you. Uh. So at the time, we, if you want to have a supporting to justify your expenses, you need to do a sell bill. So as I'm here, invoice, invoice, we know that if let's say supplier supplies a good or services to the buyer, because supplier is the one they issue invoice to the buyer. This one we know. Okay. But in some circumstances, this supplier is unable to issue invoice to the buyer. So the buyer side, when they acquire the goods and services from this supplier, they need to do the sellable invoice to issue the invoice to themselves to justify their spending transaction, the purchase transaction. So what type of transaction we fall under this sell bill? Okay, I will mention here. Where is the transaction for under the sell bill e invoice? Example, payment to agent, dealer, and distributor. So when the time, if let's say your company has payment or commission to the third party agent or dealer to distributor, so when they pay the commission to them, you need to issue sell bill to yourself. All right. This is a eight transition they fall under this sell bill e invoice. So I will talk one by one in later, uh, one to six, I will talk in one detail further in details. Seven is uh, related to the uh, bank charges like loan interest, bank charges from the bank, loan interest from the bank, and loan interest from the others. So all these one also need to be supported by the sell bill e invoice. All right. So seven and eight is normally uh, referring to that top loan interest bank charges. One to six, I will further explain in the following slide. The first one, payment to agent, dealer, and distributor normally will refer you to the sales agent, property agent, insurance agent, and your company, let's say, you have uh, engaged other outside agent for you to, for doing sales for you, you pay in them the commission, okay? So if paying them the commission, make sure that what the supporting you need to get uh, is you need to issue sell bill to yourself. Okay. So normally agent will not, uh, agent not required to issue invoice to you. You are the one need to require to issue sell bill because only yourself know how much the commission you're going to pay to the agent. Agent don't know how much the amount. So that's why that's ask the person who pay the amount to the agent required to issue the sell bill to yourself. The next one is gross, gross product transition. This one referring to importation of goods and services. There's transition between Malaysia and outside Malaysia. So importation of goods and services. So we talk about first one, importation of goods first. If let's say this is foreign seller, they sell the good to you and import the goods to Malaysian purchaser. Of course, everything will pass by the custom. They issue normal invoice to you, right? So when the time you receive the good from uh, custom to the carriers, the time you need to issue sell bill to you to yourself as the purchase from the overseas uh, customer uh, supplier. Why? Because this foreign seller, they are not required to issue invoice to you because they are not doing business in Malaysia. They are outside Malaysia. They are not required to follow the Malaysia rules. That's why your side you need to justify this is your purchase then you need to issue sell bill to yourself. When you need to issue? After obtain the custom clearance document. All right. The next one, importer services. Same. This foreign service provider that pro pro provides service to Malaysian purchaser. So normally, they will issue normal invoice to you. So when the time you acquire the importer services, you also need to have a sell bill invoice to yourself to justify this is your expenses. When you need to issue an invoice, a sub bill, you only two, right? Either is payment, when the time you make payment to the uh, supplier, or you receive an invoice from the foreign supplier, whichever is early, for these two. Either payment first or receipt, whichever is early. If let's say that there's a survey test on the imported service test in, uh, uh, services in applicable, when you issue sell bill invoice, make sure you need to include the survey test amount in the sell bill invoice, huh? right? All right. The next one will be profit distribution. 
So profit distribution, it means the uh, like uh, dividend, like unit trust. But uh, this dividend that I mentioned here does not include the single tier dividend. Huh? Replace that the single tier dividend, you are exempted from the e invoice. Here dividend is mentioned, uh, some of the dividend that is uh, subject to the tax, there is a tax amount, like unit trust fund. So all those profit distribution, you are still required to issue e invoice. But you issue sell bill. E-commerce transaction uh, is when there's a, uh, you, you, normally if you want to buy something, you buy something from the online platform. Okay, so this sell bill is uh, mentioned when there's a transaction between the e-commerce platform and the merchant. So uh, only e-commerce platform will provide sell bill invoice to the merchant. To just uh to list out the income earned by the uh merchant. So that's mean when the, when the merchant they go to they, they put their book in the online platform to sell the product. So only the online platform, e-commerce platform, they know how much the goods is sold out. So e-commerce platform, you calculate what is the uh revenue to be recorded for the uh, by the merchant, they will issue sell bill to the merchant. So e-commerce platform is not required. It is not allowed to issue consolidated. Huh? So they will need to issue subject to every, every merchant. So next time, if you if anyone is doing the online business, you need to be careful because Lester, Lester, later on, in, in company will know how much is your sales recorded from the uh, online platform sales. Acquisition of goods on services from the individual taxpayer. So this is for the individual taxpayer who do not conduct a business. I think some businesses, you might have paid in some expenses, some fees to the individual person. This individual person, they are not doing business and they are not required to issue e invoice to you. So how are you going to support your expenses? Like rental pay to individual landlord, services pay to individual freelancer, payment to individual subcontractor. So this person, they might not give in the e given you the e invoice as a supporting. So from your side, of course, then you need to do sell bill e invoice, e invoice back to yourself to justify this is your expenses. So before you issue sell bill e invoice for this type of people, make sure you ask the individual person first whether they are going to issue e invoice to you or not. Because sometimes you might not don't know whether this individual, they are doing business or not doing business. If they're doing business, of course, that person supposedly is compulsory to issue e invoice to you. If they do not, then you just issue sell bill. Okay, under the sell bill e invoice, this is a buyer name. Buyer name will be your company name because your company is a buyer. You acquire the good, you acquire the services. Buyer is your company details. Supplier detail is the one who supply the goods to you, supply the service to you. So you need to get all the information from the supplier. Okay, Unless, uh, this is the information they require to. All right. So for those foreign businesses, if let's say they do not have the income tax number, under the cell bill, you use the, this uh, specific thing number with the 30, right? So this is a sample of a cell bill. Your company name will be on top and supplier name will be here. And buyer, this is the buyer. Buyer is your, your company details here. So this is your supplier ID number, everything here. So this is the detail of the sell build con, con, uh, description. So they will also come with the unit identification number, uh, QR code. Okay, so that is a sample. All right. Uh, no, we finished on the sell build. Now the next topic is uh, we're going to share is a uh, foreign income. Sometimes the company you might receive a foreign source income from outside Malaysia. So if this foreign source income is, is uh, trans uh, transferred back to a Malaysian uh, uh, bank, uh, transfer back to Malaysia. So when you capture in Malaysia account, so of course at the time you need to issue sell bill to justify this uh, foreign source income. Uh, this, you need to issue the invoice. Huh? 
statement or view on the periodic basis. Some company they normally issue out the invoice on the on the monthly basis or maybe on the quarterly basis, on the annual basis, on bi-annually basis. So income tax say you can follow back your invoice method to issue invoice to your customer. Okay, so there's no changes. Okay, so the changes here is just the normal invoice will become e-invoice. All right, so nothing will be different. Uh, just follow back the, the current practice. Disbursement and reimbursement is the next topic. So I think many uh, person they did not understand what is the difference between the disbursement and reimbursement. So when it comes to the e-invoice, these two, what is the difference? And whether these two also require to issue e-invoice? So I will let you, I will explain you further in the, uh, the next slide. So first you need to understand what is the disbursement and what is the reimbursement. Re disbursement is mean the out of pocket expenses incurred by the customer, but pay on behalf by you. And so you need to uh okay, here you need to very important uh, pay on behalf by you, but invoice under your customer name, but you pay on behalf for your customer. So they will under disbursement. Reimbursement it means that out of pocket man expenses incurred by your company when during uh, when you perform your service or sell a good to your customer in invoice issue to your customer name uh, company name. So that's different here. Disbursement invoice in your customer name. Re reimbursement invoice under your company name. So when the time if it's under disbursement. You're not required to issue another e invoice to recover back the money. Eh? Because the e invoice already issued to your customer. If you if you add on to your e invoice and issue again the e invoice to your customer, they will be double up. As I uh, understand, huh? So if let's say under disbursement, no more e invoice, you only require to give them the invoice and ask them to pay back to you. If let's say under reimbursement, because expenses is paid by you, invoice under your company name, of course, you need to issue invoice to recover back the money. Okay, uh, here is the example for this person. Example here, your company, uh, my, your company is here, right? This is your customer. You're running an event, and then you sign a contract with your customer. Your customer said, you, you help me to run an event, but Ask the supplier all invoice bill back to me. All right. So you go to run the event. So you go to meet the all the supplier. So you ask this supplier A, all invoice invoice to your customer name. But you pay on behalf to supplier A first. So when the time you want to recover the money from the customer, make sure no more invoice, huh? because invoice already issued. Okay, invoice already issued. So you just want to what you need to know, let, uh, let your customer have a document. You just give them a list of document, a normal request bill, and then attach all the e invoice to your customer and ask them to pay you back the money. Uh, remember, no more e invoice uh, because e invoice already issued here. Okay, if you issue again, it will be double. Okay, uh, another uh, reimbursement will be uh, condition will be like uh, suggestion will be like this. This is your company. Okay, and your same you have even even your event management. Your customer sign agreement with you, and customer said you you run you arrange the event for me, but everything uh you just let me know what how much to pay. Uh, no need to invoice to my company name. So you go to arrange, you meet all the supplier, and then you add the supplier all e invoice to your company name, and then you make payment to supplier. So e invoice complete here. So when the time you want to recover the payment from your customer, so of course you need to issue invoice to your customer. Because previously invoice under your name. Now want to call, collect money, of course you need to issue invoice to your customer. So that is the different reimbursement and disbursement. Okay, so the last one we, we talked uh, on the employee perquisition. Uh, employee perquisition and benefit is something like Employee claim. We know that many uh mostly uh in the company 
most of the expenses normally is claimed by the employee and the director. So when the director and staff, they go to spend uh, spending outside like entertainment, staff refreshment, uh, printing, sundry expenses, petrol. So all these uh, like telephone, all this is under the employee uh, claim. So when the time your employee want to claim back the money from the uh, company, so what is the document they need to require to give the company? Uh, remember the last uh, the uh, beginning of the seminar I mentioned. You need to support. You need to justify this is your company expenses for tax deduction. You must have an uh, invoice. So how your staff is going to be issue invoice under your company? You require to invoice when your staff want to claim back the money. So general rule here. When your employee want to uh, pay something, and this is for company, they want to claim back from company, measure, measure ask your employee who issue invoice under company name first. If let's say the, the, the your employee said that the, the supplier unable to issue invoice to your company, so maybe they allow your employee to issue invoice under your employee name. So business can allow the invoice to be issued under the employee name as a proof of expenses. But there's a with the condition. Huh? Condition here is you must mention this in the employee employer policy. That means your company policy. Your company policy must measure stated you allow your staff to claim back the expenses and the invoice is under the staff name. All right. So the third one condition here is expenses paid to foreign supplier. If let's say, uh, example, you, if your company going to a uh, company trip or your employee go to overseas because of business trip, they want to meet client, meet the supplier in overseas. So, of course, they will have a spending in overseas. So, when the time they spend all the invoice, uh, they pay all the invoice and then uh, bring back to Malaysia, uh, they are not required to issue a sell bill to, to Sell build all the invoice that you pay to over uh during the time you spend in overseas. Uh. Okay, income they say this foreign supplier receipt invoice still can prove as the expenses for the company. Okay, so for expenses paid to the foreign supplier during the business trip or company trip, is that's what that is. Let's say this allow for the company expenses, you still can accept a normal supplier invoice. So for this exception, uh, this exception is you must update in your employer company policy to mention that company is allowed your employee to claim back the expenses and e-invoice the issue under the employee name. But of course, you need to notify, you need to ask your, uh, let your employee know. Try their best to get e-invoice under the company name first. Unless uh, the, the supplier unable to give under your company name, they only issue under your personal name. All right. So this is step for you to acquire for the uh, for the uh, stock claim. First, your staff must ask whether there's a whether the supplier can issue invoice under the company name or not. So example, when your when your staff go to buy sundry sundry expenses sundry for your company or petrol station pumping the petrol or go to f and entertain, uh, entertainment uh, to a customer, you have an entertainment bill. So first, you need to ask whether the e-invoice can be issued under company name or not. If it can under, into, issue under company name, then just provide the company name details. So if cannot, then only provide your own details. So then employee made the payment and received the e-invoice and then pass back to the company and claim back the money. All right. So this is a general rule for the how the process to claim back the expenses. First, the staff, let's say they want to claim back expenses from the company. You must require invoice under the company name or employee name. If let's say under company name, no, then no issue. If let's say an invoice under employee name, so make sure you have uh, update your company policy. All right. So if at the end, your employee unable to get invoice for the expenses. So, what uh at the end, if let's say you have those normal invoice 
normal invoice only without invoice. So these expenses will not able to get tax deduction. Right? Understand? You are not able to get tax deduction. Right? So the last one, currency exchange rate. Some of the transactions, you might need to uh, key in the currency exchange rate in the e invoice. So why is the exchange rate that you need to use? Like as importation of good, exportation of good, expenses or services. So why is the exchange rate that you need to require to key uh, stated in the e invoice? So income tax given the rules here. If let's say first you need to check whether there's any uh, foreign currency rate determined by the custom. If let's say custom given the rate under the custom document, then you follow the custom rate first. Unless there's no custom document, no other rate, then follow your internal policy, like bank Nagara rate or bank exchange rate. Right. This is the specific industry guide for certain industry. Because uh, supposedly income tax need to issue out the specific industry guide for each type of industry like construction, like trading, they, they should have a guide. Let, let uh, the businesses easily to implement the uh, e invoice in their industry. But until today, there's only five industries that have a guide uh, applicable, uh, available in the income tax portal. So here, I just mentioned two of the uh, industry guide for your reference. First is the construction. In the construction FAQ, now the guide, uh, income tax guide is not like a custom guide. They just issue a FAQ. Uh. This FAQ first, uh, in the construction, there is only uh, four questions and four answers. The first question is whether penalty is required to have an invoice. They say yes. If let's say the charges of penalty, charges to the subcon, including the penalty, you need to issue invoice. Okay. The next question is when the construction business, they need to issue invoice. Because you know the construction, they might need to follow some, uh, have a, normally they have a two scenario. One is with cert certificate work done. One is without certificate work done. Okay. So if let's say there's no, there's without certificate work done, then just follow your progress claim period. Let's say you finish your claim, your, your finish your work done, you how many percent, you just claim, issue the invoice accordingly your normal practice. Okay. So another is, let's say this project is required a certificate work done. So you just follow the certificate of work done the date. Once you obtain, receive a certificate of work done, then you issue invoice to your customer. So the question three mentioned here, sometimes the main contractor, contractor might purchase a material on behalf of the subcontractor. So now whether how the invoice will be going to implement, uh, to issue to both parties. Uh, so the main contractor, you need to check whether the invoice will be under disbursement method or reimbursement method. So both also they require invoice, whether you need to see whether under disbursement or whether under reimbursement method. All right. The question for is company A intend to sell construction material to related party. Is company A implement invoice in phase one? Should they invoice to the related party? So of course, once your company A uh, start your invoice, then you need to issue invoice. In, uh, when you sell the product to your later party, you also need to require issue invoice. So they mentioned here, consolidated invoice is not allowed for sale of construction material. So further guide, we need to uh, need to seek a uh, further update from the, for this construction material business, we need to look for the further update from the income test, All right? So the next one will e-commerce. E-commerce uh, scenario will be like that uh, here. This is e-commerce platform like Shopee, Lazada. So this your purchases like your indie, like your yourself or your company. When you go on to order something from the e-commerce platform, you will go to the platform to make order. All right. Once you make order, in e-commerce platform, you notify the supplier merchant and supply the good and the, uh, delivery the good to you, to you, right? So when the time you made an order to the e-commerce platform like Shopee Lazada, Shopee Lazada will ask you whether you require e-invoice or not. 
if let's say you require invoice, then they will issue invoice to you. Of course, you need to give them all the information. Uh. Uh, if let's say you does not require invoice, Shopee Lazada, you issue normal invoice to you. Then they will they will prepare the consolidated invoice to the income tax after end of month. So remember, uh, make sure you within the month, uh, if let's say you purchase in this month, next month you want to require invoice for the e-commerce platform, they won't give you the invoice. Uh. All right. So when e-commerce platform, they want to pay back the revenue to the merchant because this is the profit made by the merchant. So e-commerce platform, you issue shell bill invoice to the merchant to recognize the whatever the profit income earned by the merchant. So the merchant not required to issue invoice to the e-commerce platform. Just wait for the e-commerce platform to issue shell bill. And you just keep the shell bill invoice as your sales income. Okay, so e-commerce platform, you also invoice, if let's say they have an extra ad additional charges to the merchant, they will also issue normal in, uh, invoice to the merchant to record all the charges. So this is the e-commerce uh, uh, platform scenario. All right, 